So I'll now be speaking to Dr. Victoria Sampson. Welcome, Victoria. You do a lot of work on the microbiome, which is very interesting. Could you please explain this in more detail and share your experience of the challenges that you've faced as a clinician with patients you have attracted through your work within the microbiome? Yeah, so um, I got really into the oral microbiome um, pretty much now a year ago. So it all started with research that I had conducted looking at the oral microbiome and whether dysbiosis could potentially um, impact COVID-19 complications or increase the risk of them. And then from that research, it just opened my eyes to the microbiome. You know, we, we'd learned about bacteria at university, but we didn't really understand how you could necessarily modify the bacteria in the mouth, how different risk factors um, increase or decrease the number of bacteria in the mouth and what type of ramifications they have. Um, so it's become my new little obsession. I, I absolutely love it. I do a lot of microbiome testing on patients um, and I, I try and modify their bacteria. Um, in terms of the kind of the problems that come with that is that not problems. But it's more, um, I get a lot of patients, new patients who come in, they want a dentist who um, is maybe more holistic and thinks about the whole body and how the oral microbiome can impact other microbiomes like the gut. Um, and so a lot of these patients, interestingly, also are fluoride free. Um, and it's become a really big thing for me in the past year where a lot of my patients really don't want to use fluoride. Um, and initially I tried to convince them, I'd sit there, I, I would rehearse my 10 minute, you know, fluoride's great for you. This is what I learned at university. And we all know as dental professionals, how amazing fluoride is. Um, but what I've found is that with those particular types of patients, when they've done their research and they've come to a conclusion about fluoride, it is next to impossible to try and convince them otherwise. And you are at risk of actually um, kind of turning that patient down. And, you know, if a patient has their certain beliefs, I, I've now come to think that actually, you know what, you do you. If you've done your research and you think that that's right for your body, then sure, of course. But you, you need to understand the consequences and you also need to have a good replacement. Um, and that's where Biomin comes in really handy because... For a long time, I wasn't able to recommend a fluoride-free toothpaste to these patients, um, which I actually genuinely believed in. And a lot of these fluoride-free toothpastes um, have a lot of essential oils. Um, they've got a lot of other things that can strip the oral microbiome um, or have absolutely no effect on the dentition or reduce the risk of decay. And, and then you're just like, well, you're just putting cream on your teeth, essentially, with no, no benefit. Um, so biomin having that fluoride free option and the fluoride option gives patients that option to choose themselves. And I know that, okay, if they go home and they choose that fluoride free biomin, they're not at a really dangerous risk of decay. And I might reduce their recall. I might see them more often. I tell them this all the time. I say, look, if you want to be fluoride free, that's fine, but you have just increased your risk of decay. Therefore, I want you to have a highly remineralizing toothpaste. I want to reduce your recalls and see you more regularly. Um, and most patients are fine with that. And they, those are the patients that you need to really um, create a good relationship with. Because as I said, a lot of those patients at the beginning, when I kept on giving them my 10 minute spiel, um, they wouldn't come back and they would say, oh, it's one of those other dentists. She's all about fluoride. And she would, um, and they would never come back. And it's those patients that you want to keep, you know, track of and watch them. And if they've made their own decisions, you know, you, we all have patients who smoke, we tell them not to smoke, they continue to smoke. It's, you have to kind of adapt and think of other options that you can give them. Yeah. And this is where biomin C fits into this other option that you can give. Exactly. Them. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have done some interesting work throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, which you've touched on exploring the bi-directional link between COVID and periodontal disease with specific focus on the inflammatory markers. And it's fascinating really to learn of the increased risk of COVID complications relating to period disease. How do you feel we can best communicate this to the public? I mean, I've tried a lot um, with, you know, publishing, trying to publish things in, in the media, in newspapers. I do it a lot on my Instagram um, and that's been quite good. 
Um, and also just every time a patient comes in now, I, I do discuss with them. I mean, COVID is very topical. I'm sure, you know, COVID leaves our lips at least five times a day. So it's very easy to bring it into conversation. And it's a good door to telling patients, okay, look, actually, there's now research that has shown that gum disease does increase your risk of complications from COVID, but also that gum disease can increase your risk of other systemic diseases. And it, and then, you know, it's, it's a whole open door and you can discuss a lot of those risks with those patients. Mm. It helps in a way to tie in the oral systemic, as you said. Exactly. It, it opens that door and it makes it, um, a lot more of a fluid conversation. It's not just you as a clinician telling your patient, this is good, this is bad. And you know what I mean? It, it, it makes it a more conversation where people are like, oh, I just had my COVID vaccine or, oh, I, I just, you know, recovered from COVID and I had really bad symptoms. And you're like, well, actually, you know, the inflammatory markers, you know, the low grade chronic inflammation, all of these things are also connected with other systemic diseases, which unfortunately don't just go away like COVID and they will be there for life if you don't take care of your mouth. Yeah, I, I like the way you phrase that, that don't go away. Um, yeah. And something for us all to be hooking onto as clinicians <laughs> and maybe the way that we say it and explain it. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to oral hygiene, the primary responsibility is, of course, with the patient. How do you feel your influence contributes to their overall care and the uptake of other treatment in the dental practice? Oh, well, I think that, um, you know, uh, lots of patients, they, they know that they should brush twice a day, they should floss, etc. cetera. Um, a lot of them don't do that, even though they know it's, it's not right. Um, and also if they do brush twice a day, they mostly don't brush for two minutes. I mean, I think the average is 40 seconds. Um, so it is incredibly important for dental professionals to stress the importance of oral hygiene. And that it's not just, you know, we like saying it, we actually mean it. And there's a lot of evidence behind it that reduces the risk of developing other problems in the mouth. Um, and I think that COVID has weirdly been a very big, um, kind of blessing for us in that way because patients for a year or a year and a half some of them have not been coming to the dentist and they've had to rely solely on their own oral hygiene at home to maintain their mouths um, and they found you know they they can't just rely on seeing the hygienist every two months to clean up their calculus that they didn't get rid of with their toothbrush um, and so patients they really recognize and they appreciate the importance of dentistry um, and of dental care. And they understand that how important their oral hygiene at home is. And there were a lot of them, they were, they were you know, petrified that they might get an abscess in the middle of COVID. Yeah. And so they became really hot on cleaning on, you know, I would get so many people emailing me being like, hey, uh, what toothpaste should I use? Should I change my toothbrush? Because I can't see you, so I need to do more at home. Yeah. Maybe it's, as you said, it's the focus is their awareness, the focus and responsibility lies with them. Exactly. And now a lot of patients where they're not only just aware of their oral health, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> I'm sure you've seen, you know, so many more, more people going for runs and they're on diets and they're, you know, it's been a year where we've all shifted our priorities. Um, and some really interesting statistics came out where they looked at, um, the top five New Year's resolutions for um, American and UK citizens. And in 2020, the top uh, resolution was to make more money. Um, and then it was to, you know, find some romantic relationship of some sort or get married or have babies or those types of things. And health came, I think, fourth. Um, and then in the 2021 resolution, health came first. Everyone wanted to be healthy. Then second came fitness. Um, then third came family and wanting to spend more time with your family. And so you can see that our priorities have shifted a lot. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I understand you stopped biomin products in your practice. What has been your overall experience with the biomin toothpaste? I mean, I absolutely love it. Um, and I'm not being, you know, I have not been forced to say that. I really do genuinely, I use it myself. Um, I stress that all of my patients use it, you know, if they've got sensitivity, if they're at high risk of decay, or just even as a normal toothpaste, it's brilliant. I mean, it tastes nice. 
Um, it feels nice and it has so many added benefits that, you know, it, it works perfectly for any patient. Um, and I think it's really important that a dental professional believes strongly in, in what they're recommending. So everything I recommend, I use myself. You know, I, I've even used like dry mouth pastels before just to see what they taste like and how they feel because, you know, you can't tell your patient to do something when you have no idea what it feels or tastes like yourself. Mm, absolutely. Um, and I'm aware that you utilize biomin in your whitening treatments. Um, can you please expand on this and the results? Yeah. So, um, I mean, every patient who, who whitens, I, I, it's not that I warn them. I tell them now you are going to have sensitivity, um, because it, it, it's, you know, 99% of patients will have some mild sensitivity whilst they're whitening and some will be very severe. Um, and I personally don't think it matters what whitening gel you're using or whether it's, you know, had any potassium nitrate incorporated or anything desensitizing agents, it still will cause sensitivity. Mm -hmm. um, so what I've started to do is I recommend patients use Biomin two weeks before they start whitening. So when I take the impressions for their whitening trays, I make them buy Biomin. They start using that twice a day as their normal toothpaste. Um, and then they, they go to um, start whitening two weeks later. And I recommend that if they can whiten and they're okay, then continue. But if they have a lot of sensitivity or they're finding it really uncomfortable, then to take a day off and put Biomin toothpaste inside their whitening trays and sleep with that um, overnight and then switch back to whitening. So I've had a few patients who go every other night with toothpaste and then the other night with whitening. Um, and it means that it's achievable for patients because what I hate the most is patients who they, they start whitening and then, you know, day three, they, they stop because it causes too much sensitivity and then they throw away their trays and they, they kind of, they lose their trust in you because they're like, well, oh, you didn't tell me it was this bad. Um, and so with this toothpaste, it really, really works. And patients are, you know, patients who specifically, for example, Invisalign patients, who have a lot of sensitivity because they're in the middle of orthodontics or teeth alignment. Um, it works fantastically for them if they want to whiten afterwards too. Yeah. And um, you have a case here that we're going to share um, on the screen. Um, and could you speak a bit about the case? Yeah. So this patient, um, she had, she always has suffered from severe sensitivity. She's got tooth surface loss. I mean, you can't see her molars in this photograph, but she, she's pretty much lost all of her enamel on her molars. Um, and even on those incisors, you can see on the top that it, they're very thin enamel um, and it, the teeth don't look strong, if that makes sense. Um, so she came to me, we did Invisalign for her. So we straightened her teeth um, and then we wanted to whiten them. So I did exactly the same protocol. She used Biomin two weeks before. Um, and then she was experiencing severe sensitivity while she was whitening. So she did every other day um, toothpaste and then whitening and then toothpaste and whitening. Um, and a few weeks later, these were the results, uh, which I think are fantastic. And what she said, quote unquote, was that her teeth look and feel younger. Um, and you can really see it in the photograph that it's not only that the teeth are significantly whiter, but the actual kind of texture and the, the actual look of the tooth has changed. It looks a lot stronger, a lot more mineralized. Um, there's no see-through anymore. And it, it's actually amazing how it's worked and she loves it and she continues to use it after her whitening. Thank you. Um, great results. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and how do you believe Barman fits into best practice and helps to make a dental practice more profitable? Well, I think that, um, you know, for best practice, the, the idea or the aim is that dentists or dental professionals provide their patients with the best options available on the market um, or the best kind of recommendations to uh, improve their oral hygiene and, and to make it the best. Um, and so something like Biomin is fantastic because it does everything. It, it can tackle sensitivity, it can tackle decay. Um, so I use it for my xerostomia patients, my high caries patients, those who have sensitivity and those who just want a good toothpaste. Um, and I'm comfortable, you know, recommending that to patients because I know that it's going to be the best option for those patients. Um, I think that it, it, I mean, another thing is trust. So, um, 
if you recommend something to your patient and they don't like it or it doesn't work for them, then they lose their trust in you quite quickly. Um, and they may not even necessarily come back to you. Um, and that's quite, uh, a, you know, that's very sad. <laughs> um, so course. by recommending a toothpaste that I can strongly believe in, and I know that patients will benefit from, um, also means that I can maintain and build on that trust. Yeah, and practice. Yeah, so, exactly. Thank you so much, Victoria. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Okay, my pleasure. <laughs>